I asked, how do you praise God? And suddenly the thought dropped in. Listen to the birds. I listen. They are all praising and worshipping. Join them. Only now I realize that was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Speaking to a completely worldly person. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the phenomenon of the 20th century. God is reaching into ordinary people first. <laughs> it's, you know, he's making the rules. We are not making it. He's reaching in. And through it, he's working through into the heart of the church. So when the Holy Spirit comes, you have a relationship, an intimacy, a friendship that will take away your loneliness, sadness, emptiness from inside. And you must fight for it. You must not rest till you receive it. Oh God, you know, God loves them. You know, God loves Jacob. You know, it was very unfair. You know, why is that? Because Jacob was one, one du duplicious guy. You know, he cheated his father. He cheated his brother. Then he cheats his father-in-law. Then he, you know, he's a cheat. But God liked, loved him. You know why he loved him? Because he wouldn't let go. Because he wrestled with the angel. And he said, I won't let you go till you bless me. And you know what the angel asked? Who is you? Who are you anyway? Then only asked his name because he won't let him go. Who are you? He said, I'm Jacob. He said, no, you are not Jacob. Jacob means thief. You are Israel, the prince of God. How did a thief become the prince of God? He wrestled. Spirituality, as far as I know, you wrestle with God. That's all. <laughs> You're not trying to be good. You're not trying to be holy. You wrestle. I will not rest. I want you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that wrestling transforms us from Jacob to Israel. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what God can do in a human being? And the other one is fire. My brothers and sisters, uh, Matthew in 3.10, uh, John the Baptist explains. He says, the axe is already laid to the tree. And the trees will be burned by fire. What is this fire? It's the fire that will actually burn the sinfulness inside us. When you have the Holy Spirit fire, it will burn the flesh. Addictions will be smashed. Internal unholiness will be broken. Holiness will be formed by God himself. Because the fire will burn inside you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my efforts now are not to be better than anybody else, but to actually allow the Holy Spirit to send this fire deeper and deeper inside us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The third point. The result of having the Holy Spirit. What will, what, you host the Holy Spirit, that's all you do. What's the result? If you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you learn to host him, you know. You can't host sin and you can't host the Holy Spirit. You can't, you can't host your own desires and you can't host the Holy Spirit. You learn to host the Holy Spirit. Then you'll find the result. Galatians 5, 22. You can repeat after me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Stop there. Do you see that there's a structural problem in this sentence there is an English language problem somebody can tell me hey, what should it be fruits isn't it but they have mentioned it on purpose <laughs> there is only one result of having the Holy Spirit when you have the Holy the result of having the Holy Spirit is Love, peace, and joy. 
I have no time to explain the fruits of the Holy Spirit, but I'm just going to tell you, this love is not just a feeling inside. Romans 5.5 5 will tell you, the love of God is poured into your hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God is poured into your hearts by the Holy Spirit. You have a direct experience of God's love. It's not coming because you did something good and holy. You, it's downloaded directly into your spirit. I can tell you the first time I experienced something like that. Here I was trying to find out, you know, trying to understand what had happened to me, baptized in the Holy Spirit, 1976. And I'm reading the Bible and I'm worshiping the Lord. It's 10 o'clock in the night. And I close my eyes and suddenly I sense a presence so close that I'm sweating. I knew it's the presence of God. But I'm also telling him, Lord, please don't appear to me. <laughs> <laughs> because if you appear, I'll drop dead. <laughs> but I can tell you, the love of God was not some idea I read in a book. Not some emotion that was generated by a song. It was downloaded directly into my heart. I was lost after that. What do you mean lost? You, well, you will never be satisfied with any other love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do you keep someone faithful to God? You know how? Let them taste the love of God. <laughs> you, can't, you can't walk away from that love. You're gone. That's why Elisha said, don't touch me. He told Elijah, don't touch me. Don't touch me. He said, he said what do you do? I'm not touching you. <laughs> because Elisha knew, if you get touched, you're gone. You'll never be ordinary again. Praise the Lord. Imagine thousands of people living like that in our parishes. Imagine the kind of change that will take place in the world. We are trying to control people, advise people, push people, you know, put, fix the rules, supervise people. All you need to do, let them taste this love. And there's another side to this love is, when you are loved in that love, you are given the grace to love people you can't love. Those people don't deserve to love, to be loved, but you can love them. Because you have experienced that merciful love in your own heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I tell people when they come to me for spiritual guidance, first of all, you know the guidance I give them. Love, love Jesus selfishly. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about anybody else or trying to serve him or trying to be a disciple. Forget about it. Just hang on to him. Let him meet your innermost need. The moment that happens, he will equip you to love those who cannot be loved. Otherwise, we are trying to teach people how to do it. And they are failing and they are falling. And then we are saying, we have, they know, there is no power. Yes, because we haven't touched, been touched by this love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's the same with peace. It's the same with joy. So, you understand what I'm saying. But you know, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, the begin, the journey with the Spirit is like a drunkard's life. Let me explain. I told you I was a drunkard earlier, so I can explain in those terminology. You know, when a person gets drunk, they have the fruits of what? Drunkenness. <laughs> You know, have, have you seen them having the fruits of drunkenness? Those who don't talk, what do they do? They start talking. Those who can't sing, what do they do? They sing anyway. 
<laughs> and those who were like you know quiet cowards what do they do they start fighting there's a personality change because they have the spirit of alcohol are you following what I'm saying? In the same way, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is moving in you, you have a manifestation. Love, joy and peace. But it won't last like alcohol. <laughs> you know, when you drink this evening, tomorrow morning, you won't be, <laughs> you won't be, uh, you won't be drunk, isn't it? You need, what do you have to do? You have to recharge exactly that right, drunk again. <laughs> so I've learned another kind of spirituality. I'll teach you. Our method is this. Live 24 hours in the spirit. That's our goal. That's our target. Live 24 hours in the spirit. How do you do that? Let me show you. You get up early morning. And what do you do? Connect with the Holy Spirit living inside you. We, we have something called a four-step prayer. Through the four-step prayer, we renew the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We come as we are. We tell the Lord, Lord, last night I had these dreams. I had, this, I had these issues inside of me. I tell him. Then I give him the truth. I confess my brokenness. And I say, Lord, I have these issues inside life. I have this thing and I have that thing. And I, and I give him the truth. And then I surrender to Jesus. And I say, Lord, I don't want to live by myself. Actually, I want to live connected to you. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And then I start worshiping the Lord. And when I do that, you know what happens? I know how the, when the Holy Spirit has moved in my life. How do you know? You have love, joy, and peace. You enjoy it. Then I read the scriptures. When I'm reading the scripture, Jesus is talking to me. I'm now even more closer to him. And then I get into my car. I want to go to office. Then I put on a worship CD. You know, the worship CDs are, you know, gives you the environment of heaven and I'm going with the worship on, you know, and I'm in heaven, I'm worshiping the Lord, I'm in the spirit, you know, and while I'm driving, you know what happens? One of these three wheelers, you know, you have these three wheelers here also, we have it there also, you know, one of them, they cross from the wrong side right across my, my car. And you know what that guy does? He puts his head out and compliments my parents, you know. So I also put the shutter down and compliment him back with a few names of some animals in the zoo, you know. <laughs> now, you know how long that conversation took? Five seconds. He passes this way, I'm passing this way. You know what happened? What happened? He took my peace, love and joy and went. I lost my whole morning's prayer. I lost it. And you know what? Sandpaper has come now. You fool. You fell into this. What a kind of spirituality do you have anyway? You were worse than that guy. And now I am being condemned. What do you do? Do you wait till tomorrow morning? No. While I am driving, I return to God in my spirit. Lord, I'm coming back to you. I fell. <laughs> I fell here. Forgive me. I don't want to live separated from you. I am surrendering to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit once again. You know what happens? Again, I'm baptized in the Spirit. How do I know? Love, peace, and joy. How many times a day? Who cares? <laughs> Even a hundred. Who cares? The whole journey is a journey of returning. That's all. You know, God taught me. You know, I took this book of St. John on the cross. And then I took of St. Teresa of Avila, the interior castle. I'm reading it, you know. You know what I'm finding out when I'm reading? I'm trying to find out where I am. 
and that also ego <laughs> i want to know whether i am in the first one second one maybe third one to see i am not even in the first one you know and then only i realized the lord told me you don't have that spirituality you are not even spiritual so what do i do i keep returning to god that's all you keep returning every time how many times even 100 times because i don't expect anything better from myself praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord are you following what i'm saying you know what happened after some time the intervals between falls increases it's an amazing thing those days every 15 minutes every bad thought brought you down every judgment brought you down now you can remain an hour you feel good because you are in the spirit for an hour two hours three hours it increases over time a day you look back my god i've been in the spirit in the spirit for a day I, i have the peace the love the joy of god and you know what a temptation comes and waves and you know what happens in my heart my heart says if you wave back you lose my peace and you will get the sandpaper do you want the sandpaper or do you want the temptation then you start rising above your temptations praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord it shifts into weeks you begin to get used to having this presence of the holy spirit in your heart you begin to get used to that and you know what happens what happened to the drunkards happened to us you know what happened to the drunkards when you just drink occasionally it won't show isn't it but if you drink continuously month after month year after year you know what will happen it will show how will it show the face will shine the nose will expose when that guy is coming on the road you can say ah this guy is a drunk the same thing will happen to us carrying the presence other people will receive a non verbal communication that the holy spirit is living inside of you praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord people are drawn they come and talk to you they they come and pray with you because they have this sense so there's something inside this guy you don't have to put on the holy face and wait that people you know we are expected to put the holy face on but we are having an unholy war going on inside so when you have an unholy war undealt with and you are putting on a holy face i following what i'm saying yes fourth one ministering in the power of the holy spirit ministering in the power of the holy spirit actually today most of us minister with the wisdom of this world that is we understand psychology we understand the realities of this world and we help people to live according to those dimensions but there's something called ministering in the power of the holy spirit the first thing that happens is you will start receiving downloads from god this is not some sacred holy thing downloads come what do you mean by a download you know there is the rational mind you know how the rational mind gets the ideas you follow a logical sequence and you get a consequence you get a answer okay so therefore we will look at the rational one equals one equals one therefore it is three so we have been trained by european education systems by mathematics by philosophy we have been trained to think with the rational mind that's fine but there is another dimension inside us and that is downloads coming they have a word for that that's not in the spiritual language but it's there in the psychological it's called intuition coming without a process and you know what happens as you pray as you worship those thoughts start coming inside 
you are being guided by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we as Catholics know we don't do it on our own, isn't it? But we discern. But we have to listen to that voice. I can tell you the first time I heard such an insight. It was maybe six months after being baptized in the Holy Spirit. We were organizing a five-day retreat. Now the discussion was, how do you feed the people for five days? We didn't have any experience. The nun who brought me to the experience and myself and a few others were there. We didn't know what to do. So I'm sitting in prayer one morning and I get this download. The download is very clear to me. Don't collect money. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> no, I, I went and told the sister, sister, let's not collect money. God is giving it to us. You know, we were not sophisticated enough then. Now, of course, you say, those are stupid thoughts. You know? So then we stopped collecting. Others said, you all are mad. This is the problem with this charismatic. They go off, you know, and they are now irrational, you know. Now, here I was, a few days before the retreat, still no money, seated on the steps of the church. The bishop walks in, you know. So I'm not the bishop from my childhood, you know. He looks at me and says, Lalit, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just sitting around my Lord. He said, look, look, today is the annual meet, general meeting of the parish council. No young people. Come, come, you join me. So he took me away. I didn't have a clue what they were doing. Somebody read the accounts. Somebody read the years, this thing. Then somebody read the accounts. When they read the accounts, they said, so much of money at the beginning of the year, so much of money at the end of same amount. The bishop got very angry. He said this money is to be spent on the welfare of the parish for spiritual retreats. When I heard that, <laughs> I jumped up. He asked, what do you want? I said, my Lord, <laughs> we are having a retreat. <laughs> now he's annoyed because I'm disturbing his sermon. You know? uh, but uh, what do you want? You know, we're having this retreat and we don't have any money. Okay, how much do you want? I looked at the sister. How much? Then he tells the treasurer, give them whatever they want. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That's the first time I realized that you can receive a download from the Holy Spirit. Later, over the years, God has done amazing things. But what I'm trying to tell you is, you start listening. Number two is, you can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's for you when you are prayed tomorrow. That's why I'm giving you these experiences. It's for you. God will give you the insight on how to minister in a way that will change everything. The first time that happened to me, I can tell you. It was the Feast of Pentecost 1977. There was a prayer the day before for the feast. It was a small group of people interceding. The, somebody told me, you also go and join them. So I went and sat there. And here I am praying with them. Suddenly a thought drops into my mind. Somebody has been healed of stomach cancer. Now I didn't know from where this thought came. Now I pushed it aside because I'm strongly rational as well. You know, I've gone into study, I've looked at stuff. I'm rational by nature. This thought didn't gel, but it wouldn't let me be. I can't pray anymore. So I quietly go to the sister who is leading the prayer. And I ask, sister, is there anyone here with stomach cancer? She says, no, there's no one. Thank God, I say. <laughs> because then I can get rid of this idea and pray, you know. So I forgot about it. One month later, I met the sister. She said, come here, come here. Uh, yeah. You know what happened that day? I said, no. I said, there was someone with stomach cancer. There was no one. No, she said, there was one person. We didn't know. She was sent to India for the, for the operation. When they opened up, her, there was no trace of the cancer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That day I decided, even if I become a fool, if the Lord shows me something, I'm going to say it. 
and God has been faithful over the years. How do you bring people into the heart of the church? Let me show you a verse of scripture and give you an experience and then I finish. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 24. St. Paul is talking about when people come to the church. But if an unbeliever or someone who does not understand comes in while everybody is prophesying he will be convinced by all that he by all that that he is a sinner and will be judged by all you know what he's saying somebody walks into the church while people are worshipping and they hear the gift of prophecy they will know God is speaking look at the next verse and the secrets of his heart will be laid bare so he will fall down and worship God exclaiming God is really among you he won't be an observer. What are these guys doing? Somebody walking here, somebody walking there. They'll be struck by the power of God. Let me tell you an example before I finish. Two years ago, we were invited to a retreat, a Lenten retreat. And I was preaching. Now, the priest was... Uh, no, the church had two sides on this side the priest mission house he was talking to me and the intercessory prayer group was on the other side they were with the blessed sacrament and they were praying before the blessed sacrament till I finished the sermon now while I was having tea with the priest a very disturbed family came running they said, please, please pray for us. Now they came for a quick prayer. Why did they come? Because they were, somebody told them, if you come and be prayed, you know, problem will be solved, then you can go back. They, they didn't come to me. Jesus, they came for a quick answer. They said, please pray for us. We have a big problem. I refused. I said, if you stay for the retreat, at the end, I will pray for you. They became pretty angry with me, but I refused. I said, no, you wait. So they grumblingly, they went inside the church because they wanted the prayer. Now these people didn't have a clue what was taking place. I gave the sermon, then we established the blessed sacrament and then we started the worship. She gave one word of knowledge about somebody wearing a ring that had been dedicated to some kind of a evil spirit for protection. You know what happened? That lady who wanted a quick prayer, she came running from the congregation, <laughs> fell down there, removed her ring, <laughs> put it into my hand, and she's saying, please, God, forgive me. What happened? God spoke directly into her heart. This is exactly what happens here. Then they gave a second word of knowledge. They don't, don't have a clue what's happened. The husband, the word hit him so hard, it was convicted, he couldn't stay in church, he ran out. Subsequently, we spoke to that family and brought them to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.